Okay, so our focus uh, for at least the next next uh, month, next couple of months, is going to be on sole trader businesses. Uh, now, there I've talked about sole trader businesses and the fact that they have unlimited liability, which should have scared you a little bit. You're running your business, everything's great, and then someone sues your business, and then they take everything that you own because you know they 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 managed to get a million dollars out of you. Um, so sole traders should have scared you a little bit, but there are definitely some positives to running a sole trader business. Now, first of all, they're inexpensive to set up. Inexpensive setup. Um, now, if you want to start up a private company or a public company on stock exchange, very expensive, lots of compliance. You've got to go through lots of lots of um, checks and balances, things like that. Very very simple to set up. Now, uh, another one is that if you trade under your own name, you don't have to register that. So let's say I started a business called uh, Joel Speranza Mowing. Okay, if I start a business called Joel Speranza Mowing, I don't need to register that business name. Uh, now, if you do decide you want to call it something cool like, um, let's just say no registration there. If you want to call it something cool like um, Brad to the Max Mowing, that's the coolest name I can think of right now. Now you do have to register that name. Now what is why are we registering names? Uh, it's important that people can link a business entity, a sole trader business entity, to an individual person. Um, that way, uh, any any proceedings that go against that that business are also going against the person. So that's why you have to register it. Uh, now, a little bit of um, extra bit that we need to know here. Okay, so just a little bit of formal stuff. Uh, the reason you need to register your name is because of a legal document called the uh, Business Names Act. Uh, that was made in 1962. Now, when you register it, you need to talk to the Office of Fair Trading and pay them a small fee and they'll register your business. Now, the last thing we need to talk about when you're starting your mowing business is registering for GST. Now, on anything that you, on any goods or services, that's what GST stands for, goods and services tax, you're supposed to charge GST. Um, but you only need to register your business for GST if your business makes more, if you make more than $75,000 a year. Uh, that's a fair bit of, um, uh, sorry, I should correct that. It's, you need to, no. Uh, so the last thing we need to talk about is registering for GST. Um, now, if you've got a business, whether it's a trading business or a service business, uh, if you sell goods or services, so GST stands for goods and services tax. If you sell goods or services, you should register for GST, but there's a there's a little thing here. If you're only a very small business and you only make a couple of thousand, or you only collect a couple of thousand dollars a year, they don't bother with this. They don't bother with registering you for GST. So you have to collect a substantial amount of money before you have to register for GST, and there's a cutoff. So if annual turnover is over $75,000. Now turnover just means the money that comes in. Uh, it doesn't mean profit. It means actually the amount of money that people are paying you. It doesn't, doesn't matter if you've paid out a bunch of money. It doesn't matter if you're making a profit or not. If $75,000 comes into the business from people that are paying you, then you should register for GST. Uh, and that's a very straightforward process as well. Okay, uh, that's establishing uh, establishing a sole trader business.